Hey guys, what's up? It's Sissant here today with a little bit of show and tell. I have ordered something from Etsy that has finally made its way from the Ukraine here to Australia. I've decided to up my game and buy some new leather crafting knives, so we'll be making sheaths for those, which we'll be getting into very shortly. Making sheaths like this is going to take place in three steps. The first of which is construction, or cutout if you will, where we're going to be getting the structural shapes that we'll be using for these sheaths. Step two is decoration, because the kind of carving and tooling that I want to do on these, you can't do on a completed object, so it'll be necessary to complete that step while the leather is still flat on the bench. The last step is assembly, so combining all of the pieces and finishing steps like smoothing the edges and oiling the leather. I'll put a link to the Etsy seller in the description below, and now let's cut over to the bench so that I can do a little bit of unboxing and show you my new toys. Just this morning, this arrived from the Ukraine. I thought it would be a little bit of fun to actually open this up on camera because I'm really excited to show you guys what I've got here. Oh, this is just all cling film, I guess. Oh boy, 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 oh boy. Oh, they're beautiful. These are my new leather working knives. So you can see that is hand forged steel. They've left it rough forged. This is the Crescent knife, named for the Crescent. And this one, we will call a small knife or a bearded knife, or if you're familiar with charter made, they would call this a pattern knife. Oh, they're lovely. Now, I have an old, gross, hard piece of leather here, and it has been left to dry. I, I use pieces of leather like this informally to check the sharpness of my knives. For example, my pretty little skiving knife that is going to be just impossible to show off on camera because it is a mirrored finish. To check the sharpness, I like to grab something like this and see how easily I can do a push cut. So I'm pretty confident that my skiving knife is sharp, doesn't need sharpening. All that being said, let's totally ruin the clean visual of this with my filthy old cutting mat and let's test the sharpness of these knives. We'll start with the crescent knife. Look at it. Al Stolman, who literally wrote the book on leather crafting, he called the round knife a symbol of the leather crafting trade, so. Ooh, yep, that is a sharp blade. Oh my god, oh my god. I don't think I've handled a blade this sharp before. Let's zoom right in. Okay, I shouldn't be doing it right on the edge. What I should be doing is starting and rolling and using that edge for the push. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. I'm by no means an expert yet, but one of the cool things about a crescent knife is that you can do a lot of different kinds of cuts. You can just do a rocking cut where you use the geometry of the knife to rock through the leather. You can do just a push cut using the very tip of it like I was doing before. You can do a push cut where you roll into it and because this isn't a perfect semicircle, when you roll it over slightly, you're getting all different parts of the blade geometry. And here we have the babby knife. So let's just try and get the tape off this one without removing my fingers. So this is like a little miniature crescent section. So let's see how sharp this one is out of the box. So I can park my thumb here, put my finger here to stop it wobbling. I start on the point, but as I roll it forwards, I stop about here and just shunk. Holy shit, that is sharp. Good God. Look at that. One single clean line. There's no layering through it because I've taken it all off in one absolutely clean cut. <laughs> I was not expecting these to be quite so razor sharp out of the box, but these, there is no way known that you're not seeing these guys 
heavily featured in future videos. I, I, I think that knives so lovely as these deserve a lovely sheath to go with them. So that's going to be the little project that I work on here. Something I might get a little bit carried away and make it pretty. So this should be fun. Just for something a little bit different, I thought I'd narrate this video with a voiceover rather than just rambling at the camera in real time. So, first of all, I got the leather out. I'm using four mil veg tan for this and I used a pencil to mark out the profile of the round knife. And then I got out my edge marking tool just to mark a further 10 mil out from that edge for the welt. We'll come back to the welt, I promise. After that, I got some water onto it just to make my cuts a little bit easier. And I decided to just slice this section off to make my life easier. Using a silver pen to just redefine my lines that got lost a little bit with the water, I started the cut. I thought that it would be a cool way to break these knives in would be by using them as much as possible on their own sheaths. And I'm sure you can see this was my very first time using this knife, so be nice. The other half of the sheath includes closures to hold both halves together, so I started by cutting out this much longer piece. Oh, straight lines like this are where the knife really excels. So finishing off the curved cuts, on the other hand, is uh, something that did take me a little bit of practice. Next, I marked off the curves at the shoulder of the knife and punched out the radius with a hole punch. Unfortunately for me, my hole punch wasn't cooperating and I ended up finishing the cut with the round knife. This was actually really good practice and a great demonstration of what kind of tiny curves you can actually cut with this huge knife. And then it was time to get my skiving knife out. So both of these flaps need to fold completely over and rest on the other side of the sheath, accommodating everything in between. And so to help that leather bend, I'm using this knife to remove bulk from the reverse side. There are plenty of ways to do this, but I'm using a Japanese style skiving knife to carve out a channel that kind of meets in the middle. So I end up doing this on both flaps and I will end up taking several passes on these channels just to get them as wide and as deep as I want them to accept all of the bulk that is going to be sitting in the middle. I'll put some water on the fold lines to help the leather fold a bit more easily and I used the end of my maul to make sure that everything was firmly in place before I marked off the edges with an awl and just trimmed the edges off of the flaps to keep that circular shape. Half, half circular, semi-circular? Then I used the front of the sheath as a template to cut the welt out of an old piece of scrap that's quite firm, it's very old, and it's got a nice, deep, almost orange color that contrasts with the leather that I'm making the rest of the sheath out of. I think it's gonna look pretty striking. I started making marks to shore up the geometry on the front. This was just with an edge marker. After that, I cut a curve into the fixed front flap as opposed to the front flap that flies free. That only took me two takes to get. The one thing that I did get kind of precious about was the position of this particular stamp on that fixed front section. I got this lovely stamp as a gift and I'm very excited that I can sign my work now. After that came some more marking and cutting out on the opposite flap, just to get that to a shape that'll latch down properly. I did end up using the small knife for this one. I thought the crescent knife was just a little bit unwieldy for this operation, so, but it still counts. They're a matched pair, it's fine. I did a rough assembly, so I stacked the knife up, added the welt, 
And then I put the front section stacked all on the back so that I could fold everything over and just kind of get a bit of a look as to how the fit was looking before I started the decoration step and fixing everything together permanently. I marked out all of my edges and borders. I went with an asymmetrical border on the fixed flap that this will make sense when you watch me stitch it down, don't worry. <laughs> and um, I got the stylus in there to really define those lines. And with this sheath now up to the decorating steps, I decided to cut out my pieces for the small knife. I know, I know, I know I said that I would be doing this all with a voiceover and that there wouldn't be any live talky bits just for something a little bit different. But I have a very good reason for doing this and that is that I wanted to. So making this sheath for this, I'm going to call it a pattern knife. I know that that's the name that Chartermaid uses for their knife, but what else do I call it? A bearded knife? Calling it a crescent knife feels a little bit incorrect, but basically I've been unable to find what other people are doing for sheaths. I don't know if this form factor is just a little bit unusual or if I'm looking for the wrong thing, but generally looking for leather knife sheath just takes you to generic sheaths for generic knives that happen to be made out of leather, which is like, that makes sense. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just complaining that I don't know what to actually search for. Anyway, that's all beside the point. So because I'm not quite sure what I should be doing for this, and also just to make it a little bit more interesting, we're going to be using a different technique to make the sheath for this one than we did for the big crescent knife. So what I've got here is a little sheet of A4 paper. I've just folded it in half. And what I'm going to do is along the fold, I'm just going to mark off the thickness of my leather along the fold, and this will help to accommodate the welt. If you'd like to see more of a discussion about the geometry of exactly how this works, you can check out the other video that I have about making knife sheets, which I'll add in an annotation in whichever corner it is that annotations go. So what I'm gonna do now, just trace around this bad boy. Next step is marking out the thickness of my welt, and I'm gonna have a 10 mil welt. Okay, now I need to join the dots on this. Now do I want a... Well, that's kind of handsome, but what if I... Mm. Nah, I don't like straight line. Do I like just following the contours of the knife? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I might move this spike just up a little bit. I might have to do a straight line, which is a bit of a bummer. Or oh, what about this? If we do a straight line to there. Is this going to work? Is this how geometry is? Never ever let it be said that I don't take parallel lines seriously. In theory, that looks good. Uh, let's get this cut out of some leather, I suppose. And then, you know, we'll go back to the voiceover like normal. Okay, let's run through this quick because this is kind of the same as cut out on the bigger sheath. First, I marked out the pattern with my silver pen and then I cut it out with the knife. First, cutting out this larger chunk so that I could work on it more easily and then refining my lines. One thing that was different uh, was finding a good hole punch that worked, which allowed me to get those smooth radii in the corners. And another point of difference was the welt. I used the paper pattern and an awl to measure the curve and then cut it out of a piece of scrap. I did this by laying it over and just putting a series of dots with the awl, and then later connecting those dots and just cutting out the curve. Then wetting, folding and skiving the parts that need to wrap around the sheath were all very similar and I was up to marking out the edges for the decoration. Uh, incidentally, the order that I actually did all of this in was much more nonsensical. So uh, you can actually see the other sheath in different stages of finish in the background. You should probably ignore that. 
but with both sheets now cut out and ready for decoration, it was time for me to draw up a pattern and transfer it. I traced the sheaths just to get the right size, and I decided to freehand some floral patterns using popular elements from floral leather carvings that I've done before and I feel pretty comfortable with using. I then use my stylus to trace them onto the leather through the paper. This is a single use method. The paper generally won't survive to a second transfer, but this was fine for me because I was only making one of each sheath. I won't go too far into the carving and the tooling because that is kind of a whole world unto itself. But it's all about maintaining the right moisture level in your leather to allow the swivel knife to cut properly. With this swivel knife, I'm just trying to go about one third of the way through the leather in order to leave a good mark, but not punch clear through the other side. Making sure to add more water as needed, it's just a matter of tracing over all the lines that I've got until I got to the depth that I wanted. Moisture is also really important for these tools to strike and leave an imprint that's deep enough to show up without splitting the skin. I used a variety of different tools around the edges here, including this lovely little circle tool to get the uh, seeds in the middle of the flower. I like swapping out to different tools like camouflages for the ferns, as you can see here. It gives a lot of different textures and sort of a lot of different things going on that will show up when the antiquing comes in. I used a background tool to fill in the spaces with some texture that will show up our antique in colour very nicely, and for the front of the sheath, I just went with general stamped patterns. Rather than carving or any tooling, I figured the reverse side was already busy enough, and you can hardly see any of this when the sheath is closed anyway. The smaller knife didn't have heaps of real estate for decoration on the sheath, but I was pretty happy with myself that I managed to fit one happy little flower onto it. This was a style that I hadn't really done before, so it was a little bit experimental, and I'm pretty pleased with the results, honestly. A lot of things in this build are order of operations sensitive. I won't have clear, easy access to these particular edges later on in assembly, so I'm beveling and burnishing these edges now. I personally just use beeswax and a wooden burnishing tool. There are tons of different ways to do this. And we're finally at assembly! The big sheath was a matter of sandwiching everything correctly, making sure that the glue was nice and tacky, roughing up the leather beforehand, belting the crap out of it with my maul. Layering the welt in the right spot and folding over this front flap here so that the curves matched up. Once I knew where the curve was marked out with my awl, I was able to rough up the surface and get some glue in here. This Leathercraft cement is the real deal. This is gonna hold it fast, you know?
So this flap needs to be stitched down separately before I do the stitching along the welt. So that's why I'm punching these holes now. I used Phoebing's Cordovan Antiquing. I really like the color. It's kind of this ready ochre. It's thick and it's gunky and it really lets you get in there. And that's what the antiquing is for. It's meant to get deep into those cracks and stain the deeper parts of the carving. And you then wipe away the excess from the top, in my case, with a paper towel. I thought it might be fun to have these have kind of slightly different finishes. And so when I put the antiquing onto the smaller sheath, I actually let most of it dry in place to give it more of a real prominent red color. Then it was over to the stitching pony to run a saddle stitch through that front flap on the big sheath. This was the easiest stitching run in the whole project and it was still going through a double layer of four mil thick leather. Because this sheath was going to have a more natural color tone, I decided to just use a natural unbleached linen thread that I did wax. Whereas on the smaller sheath, I wound up going with a beautiful little butterscotch colored thread. And I'd like those little points of difference between them. I attached the standoffs that hold the sheets closed and then it was time to glue them fully together. You'd honestly be surprised how important the step of just beating the shit out of it with the flat of the mall is. And then, it was time to finish all of my edges. I used some more beeswax for burnishing, as well as the uh, tapered end of my tool, just swapping it around as I needed it. Then I was up to trimming all of the rubbish off of the welts on both of them. I ended up using the small knife for this on both sheaths. Just trying to get a smooth edge over to the sandpaper. And then once it was smooth enough, I beveled and burnished this ludicrously thick edge as well. It can be a bit of a struggle burnishing edges quite so thick, so I just used whichever parts of the burnisher I thought would work properly for me. Tired of that thumping sound yet? Pro tip, use the stitching pony as a big wide flat clamp. I, I do just have to gush for a minute. These knives are honestly so lovely to use. Especially that rolling cut. They're just so satisfying. You just give them the slightest push and they glide through the leather. Once I'd gotten past the sanding step for the big sheath, you can really start to see the multi-toned edge starting to come through. I'm really, really pleased with this look and I think it came out great. And now for the final stitching. Now, my pricking iron uh, does not have long enough tines to strike all the way through either of these sheaths in any part. Now 
And so as you can see here, I was forced to wrestle with a very long and sharp awl in order to finish piercing the rest of the way through the piece. This is a kind of saddle stitching that I definitely need more practice with and to be perfectly frank with you, I'm kind of unhappy at how uneven some of the holes are on the reverse side where the awl has struck through. There is a technique to holding the awl at a steady, repeatable angle and pierce through consistently, but ultimately, like most skills, this is going to come down to practice and me spending many more hours honing it. Yeah, that there, that's three layers of four mil leather with a two and a half mil welt in between. <laughs> I think this is the thickest thing that I've ever run any thread through. And look, we got there in the end, but it was a learning experience. And with the stitching done, it was finally time to apply a supremely liberal coat of Neat's foot oil and to finally sheathe my blades. As I said earlier, if you do decide to stick around this channel and, you know, maybe subscribe, eh? Eh? you will certainly be seeing a lot more of these incredible incredibly beautiful and sharp knives and plenty more of the sheaths that now hold them up in the pride of place on my pegboard. If you are new here, this video was a little bit of a departure from the ongoing series of cosplay items that I've been making for Geralt's Manticore armor from The Witcher 3, but there shall be more of that forthcoming. And of course, whether you are new or returning, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of watching me play with my new toys. Thank you so much for watching. You guys take it easy and I'll catch you next time. I think I got it.